Joining us now from House Foreign Affairs, he's a ranking member there. Back with us is Congressman Michael McCall. It's so great to see you. Okay, the Democrats, yes, was. The Democrats policy shop, it's pretty empty. Democrat Ro Kahana said today, all Democrats have is build back better and more COVID relief. What do you say to that? Uh, they have no winning issues. And, and you know, they, they're debating this COVID relief package, and yet the president's going to lift Title 42, which would lift all uh, health restrictions of illegals coming across in my state at record numbers uh, into the country. I, I don't see what they can run on. They haven't accomplished really anything. Uh, you know, and all they can talk about is primarily January 6th, but what is the record of accomplishment they're going to run on for re-election in the midterms? Yeah, you know, Harvard-Harris poll, you know, it, it shows a lot of fear among Americans. It's sort of like combining the war period of the 1960s with the high inflation period of the 70s with mm -hmm. the crime era mm -hmm. of the 80s and the fears about the border from the 90s, right? And so you see soccer moms, suburban voters, so a record 20-point drop in to new lows with young voters for Biden, and the president continues to make whoppers and mistakes. Let's watch this. Watch. I've flown over every major wildfire in this country with FEMA since, uh, not every, I, a couple I didn't, but the vast majority of them, and it's devastating. Here, out here in the West, we're repowering retired power plants and clean, clean hydrogen and advanced nuclear, making them economic cubs again. I made it clear to my friends up in uh, Nantucket in that area. I don't want to hear any more about you don't like looking at them. <laughs> They're pretty. But seriously, it's incredible the breakthroughs that are making. Once you tell a nation that we can do this, go do it, it's amazing what happens. It's amazing what happens. He's talking about windmills in the, in the ocean. What do you think of this? Look, you know, this <clears throat> remind you talk about the 60s, 70s, 80s. I was a, a senior in high school, 1979, not to date myself, but I remember that time. And, you know, we had high energy prices. We're not willing to produce energy in the United States. We had high inflation. We had an embassy taken over by terrorists and a nation, that being Iran. Uh, and we were told back then we just had to accept the fact that America was no longer exceptional that we were no longer going to be a superpower. We had to kind of bow out. And then it took a Ronald Reagan to come into office in 1980, the first president I had the honor to vote for. And Liz, I got to tell you, the parallels are striking. In fact, though, I would argue that, you know, this guy is making Carter look better uh, historically with, with all of the damage he is doing. I've never seen a president do more damage in one year to both energy production, to inflation, to a for, foreign policy failures, uh, and now with the border being wide open and a Texas National Guardman, you know, dying trying to save two narco traffickers in the Rio Grande, I, this is really uh, turned upside down. And to your point, the young people are not driven by this. They, they see him as a, a very old and ineffective leader. Um, and they're not inspiring the young generation. He's been around since the Nixon era, and he's still doing this damage, as you point out. Here comes Trump. Let's listen to Trump at his rally in Ohio. Watch this. There's no better proof that our country is being run by a deranged group of extremists than the treacherous crusade against American energy and Ohio energy. They see what you're doing to your energy and your energy industry with their Fake Green New Deal policies, Biden and the Democrat socialists have done what our worst enemies could never, ever have dreamed of doing to our country. Your response to that, because U.S. energy production is the cleanest in the world, but Biden is relying more and more on dirty oil and gas from foreign countries like Venezuela as he shuts down U.S. energy. Your response to Trump there? This energy policy is insane, and, and I think President Trump is correct. You know, under Trump, we were the, the largest exporter of energy. We became energy independent. He opened up the Keystone Pipeline. What's the first thing that Biden did? Shut down Keystone. Russians attacked Colonial Pipeline. The, Biden waives the mandatory sanctions on Nord Stream 2, allowing Putin to complete his pipeline into Europe. How, how crazy is that foreign policy to make Europe dependent on Russian energy? Now we see 
playing out in Ukraine, what a mistake that is. And Germany, of all countries, is waking up to the fact that that was a failed energy policy. We were going in the right direction, and this president has reversed course, going in absolutely the wrong direction. And now we're talking about blaming it on the energy companies and OPEC and this yeah. and that. When we could be pretty, and it's cleaner, Liz, it's a heck of a lot cleaner coming out of the United States. Yeah. Than it is out of Russia. And we got to move on. You know, the Supreme Court is hearing arguments over why Biden is moving against lower court rulings to keep Trump's remain in Mexico policy. People keep talking about Title 42. Even with Title 42, two and a half million crossed anyway. That's about the size, almost the size of Kansas. We've got 50 House Republicans led by Kevin McCarthy, Steve Scalise. I, say, I think that you endorse this too, sending a letter to Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas saying you're violating the court orders on this. You're unfit for office, that you should step down. Do you agree with this letter? Did you sign it? Yes, I did. And I'll be questioning Secretary Mayorkas on Wednesday. He knows better. <clears throat> he was a secretary, uh, you know, deputy secretary under, um, you know, Jay Johnson, who, by the way, said Title 42 should not be lifted during the surge. And he said 1,000 a day would be a bad day when he was in office. Now we're looking at 18,000 a day, 500,000 over the next few five weeks uh, after Title 42 is lifted. But to your point, Liz, most importantly, on day one, they rescinded the migrant protection protocols remain in Mexico, which were working. And I worked with the Trump administration to implement this that actually did secure our border. And now you have people drowning, including a National Guardsman. In the Rio Grande Pass there, Elk Eagle Pass. Uh, Congressman McCall, thanks for joining us. We'll have you back on again soon. It's good to see you. Thanks for your insights there.